Hey everyone, this is Fidel Hacker, AJ Raven. I'm back with my recap and review of The Alienist season number two, which is titled Angel of Darkness, episode number eight, which is the season finale, and it's titled Better Angels. Now, I have to say that this episode contained a whole lot of surprises for me. I wasn't expecting certain things to happen, and I'm glad. I'm always glad when writers do something unpredictable and yeah anyway coming back to the episode it opens where the previous episode ended libby uh, still has john uh, and she has uh, her knife at john's neck and she wants sarah to uh, lower her gun and also tell her where claire is and sarah is like you know what i'll tell you and i was actually very surprised uh, when uh, they act when they showed libby cutting a bit of john's neck i wasn't expecting that so that was good so uh, Sarah, because she loves John, and Libby is also able to determine that Sarah loves John, uh, Sarah is like, uh, Claire is at the Laszlo Institute, and of course Libby d doesn't like her daughter being uh, put in an, an institute, so, uh, so she's angry about it. However, her confusion and anger gives John uh, the moment to flip her over onto the ground, and I'm like, good for you, John, good for you, kind of saving yourself. So yeah, Libby has been captured. And again, when it comes to the unpredictability, I wasn't expecting them to capture Libby so soon. I thought that she was going to run away, but now uh, they have Libby uh, arrested now. And then we get to see uh, Captain Burns being uh, sad over uh, Doyle's death. And Isaac, uh, Marcus is there. And Marcus is like, uh, Doyle, uh, gave up his life serving the city and uh, and burns is like well not actually because he was actually working for the rich people the city has a whole lot of poor people and not everyone is treated the same and yeah burns is very sad about losing his uh, one of his men and like i said i wasn't expecting doyle to die either so uh, Sarah and John are at the hospital and uh, John is getting stitches, uh, especially after uh, the little cut that uh, Libby gave uh, him. And this is also where these two talk about their feelings for each other. And Sarah is like, John, it's clear that you mean the world to me and I love you. But I'm also feeling that I can't give you what you want. You, you want a wife, you need a kid. And I have a feeling that all of the things that you like me uh, like, of me as a friend you aren't going to appreciate them when i'm your wife which i mean which kind of makes sense and i can understand where sarah is coming from because a lot of time it happens that uh, you might like someone because they're adventurous they're feisty and all of that stuff but when you're married to that person you want them to calm down a bit and yeah the relationship uh, can't progress if 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 one person is trying to change the other person after they get married. Anyway, Sarah is like, yeah, you might be passionate about me, but I don't think you love me truly. And yeah, there, there's a lot that John needs to uh, figure out. And uh, these two go to the station because Laszlo is waiting for them there. And then uh, we see that uh, Burns is trying to make uh, Libby talk by torturing her. And I'm like, Burns, I don't think torture works on crazy people, but have at it, I guess. Laszlo has to go meet uh, Sarah and John. We see that we already know that Claire is under his care and Karen is there as well. And I'm not really sure how I feel about Karen getting a whole lot of screen time. It kind of makes no sense that Laszlo is tagging her along wherever he goes, but she's there. And Karen, uh, in the previous episode, we got to know that Karen got a job offer in, uh, in Vienna, and it's a job that has to do with working with Sigmund Freud, and yeah, Karen needs to go. And she's actually trying to get Laszlo to go with her, but Laszlo has his entire institute that he needs to handle. And it also, uh, it's also shared that uh, Marcus and Lucius will be staying at the Institute because they need to keep Claire safe. So Laszlo has to go. So he goes to meet John and Sarah. While all of that's happening, Gugunos is trying to figure out what to do with the baby because Libby isn't here. She's captured by the police. And Gugunos doesn't want to take care of the baby no more. The torture is clearly not working. And they're trying to drown Libby in a, in a bucket of water. 
uh, and uh, she starts whispering something and Burns tells one of his officials to get near her to see uh, to hear what she's saying and Libby ends up biting that man's ear and I'm like you know what I expected that so Sarah John and Laszlo are at the station and they aren't happy about uh, uh, Burns torturing uh, Libby they're like you don't have to torture her uh, we can figure, we can figure this out and this is where Laszlo tells Burns that you can't break someone who's already broken and Captain Burns is like you know what I give up Laszlo you go in and you use your psychological whatever you call it on Libby and see if you can get her to talk and then we get a cut and we see uh, Marcus and Lucius at the uh, Laszlo Institute and this is where Marcus shares a dream about where uh, about where he ended up dreaming about their mother and their mother asked uh, Marcus to come somewhere at midnight and when he went there she wasn't she didn't appear and Marcus asked Lucius what that means and Lucius is like I I, I don't know and then uh, Sarah wants uh, Laszlo to go in and talk to Libby but Laszlo is like Sarah no I would like you to I would like for you to go in and talk to Libby because in Libby's current sensitive state it would be better if she uh, if she sees a familiar face and Sarah is like Laszlo I'm not an alienist I don't know how to talk to other people and Laszlo is like you know what Sarah you need to believe in yourself you are trained enough you need to get her to talk so Sarah goes in and she immediately connects with Libby and these two talk about Libby's uh, childhood and uh, Libby is like you have already met my mother you know that she didn't want me as a child and Sarah is like yeah I understand that because a whole lot of time it happens that women just give birth because they feel pressure to give birth it's not because they want children and that's what makes them bad mothers and uh, Sarah is like, your father loved you, didn't he? And Libby is like, yeah, yeah, my father did. And again, Sarah's father loved Sarah as well. So these two are uh, bonding. And this is where Sarah is like, Libby, I can get Claire to come here and meet you. However, you need to tell me where the baby is. And Libby is like, come closer, Sarah, I'll tell you. And Sarah comes closer. And I was like, is Libby going to try and bite her ear off again? And no, that doesn't happen. And she tells Sarah where the baby is and Sarah decides to go. Uh, and as she's walking out of the cell, Libby asks when she'll be able to meet her daughter. And Sarah, this was a boss move. Sarah is like, bye Libby. And I like this scene uh, very much because I was like, you can't, you can't bargain with crazy people, especially murderers. So whatever Sarah did, I was here for it, even though it was cruel. And then, uh, John goes to tell Captain Burns about the location that Libby gave and Captain Burns is like yeah we need to move out right now and yeah it's clear that Sarah didn't like being so cruel to Libby and Laszlo is like Sarah don't think too much about it you did what you had to do to save a child's life so I'm proud of you and uh, John goes to Captain Burns uh, to where the baby is hidden and it's the meat factory we saw we first saw Gugu Knox in and I'm and also I'm like, what's John doing here? Why is John with the police uh, men? I have no idea. He doesn't even have a gun. But anyway, they are able to find the baby. And first I was like, is the baby going to be dead when they find it? But no, the baby's alive and John picks it up. And of course, you, it's clear that as soon as John picks up the baby, it's clear that he is someone who wants a family, who wants a baby. And Sarah can't give that to him, especially not right now. So John takes the baby to the hospital to get the baby checked up and Burns is quite suspicious. Burns is like, okay, we found the baby, but where's Gugu Knox and the rest of the gang? So that's something to be worried about. And it's revealed that Gugu Knox and his dusters decided to attack the police station. And uh, before they get, uh, get to attack the police station, we, ha we see Sarah and Laszlo looking at Libby and Sarah is like, you know what, Laszlo? Libby needs medical attention and I would like a doctor to come in and check her. Uh, however, uh, as soon as they stop talking, uh, Gugu Knox attacks the police station and he's killing people right and left and Sarah and Laszlo are taken to a cell by another policeman to, take them, uh, to keep them safe and Libby is like, Gugu Knox, Gugu, Gugu, I'm here, I'm here. And Gugu Knox uh, frees uh, Libby and Libby is like, you know what, Gugu, I can smell Sarah around. I, I want my revenge and I'm like, ooh, you can smell Sarah? You are crazy. 
And also, again, I have to say that the actress playing Libby is doing a great job. She kind of reminds me of how Nicole Kidman acts. Anyway, Gugu is like, uh, Libby, we don't have time. We need to get out of here because the rest of the police people are going to come. And I actually like Sarah and Laszlo being afraid and locking themselves in a cell. I mean, it made sense. These two aren't fighters. This was the best course of action for them during that event. So uh, after everyone leaves, Sarah and Laszlo come out and there's a whole lot of dead policemen on the floor. Then we cut to uh, Marcus checking on Claire and uh, as soon as he goes to lock the door, the bedroom door, he hears, uh, he hears something, he goes to wake up his brother and, uh, he, uh, and Marcus goes to search around and when Isaac wakes, uh, Lucius wakes up, Lucius ends up uh, encountering Libby. Libby is like, where's my daughter? Lucius aims his gun at her and then Gugu Knox comes in and Lucius aims the gun at Lu Gugu Knox. However, he's unable to pull the trigger and Gugu Knox is able to knock uh, Lucius down and then Marcus comes in and this is where I was not expecting this at all like Marcus is dead. Marcus died for some reason. I liked Marcus. I wasn't even expecting him to die. But yeah, Gugu Knox shot him with a shotgun. Or was it a rifle? I'm not really sure. But oh, this is bad. This is bad. Uh, Libby goes in to get Claire. And she's like, Claire, you need to come with me. And yeah, these three run off. And uh, I, uh, Lucius tries to heal Marcus. But it's, it's, the harm is way too much. And he can't help his brother. So he just sits there while he feels his brother dying, and it was bad, it was bad. Again, I wasn't expecting Marcus to die. So it's the next morning, and we are at uh, Marcus's funeral. Everyone's here, even Joanna is there, and I'm actually glad to see Joanna. Again, if you have been following my recap and, recaps and reviews of the series, you would know that I wanted Joanna to have a character arc, but it's the finale, so maybe in season three, who knows? And Lucius is feeling guilty because he wasn't able to pull the trigger at Gugu Knox, and that's what led to Marcus's death. And Sarah's like, don't think that, Lucius. You loved your brother, and your brother loved him. That's what matters. And this is where John's like, life is fleeting, a gust of wind, and the, and the candle extinguishes. And yeah, Sarah, I love you, and I want, you, I want to be with you, and all of that stuff. And again, you can tell that uh, John, you need, you want something that Sarah can't give you. Uh, then the episode switches to Sarah and Laszlo talking about their feelings, and Laszlo tells Sarah about uh, Karen getting a job offer at Vienna, and Sarah is like, Laszlo, are you going to go with her? And Laszlo is like, I'm not really sure, and Sarah is like, whatever you decide, uh, just make sure that your decision uh, puts your happiness forward and Laszlo understands where Sarah is coming from and he's like, Sarah, I would, I would request you to follow your own advice because I can tell that you're unhappy, especially where John is concerned. And then John comes in with Bitsy and uh, Mary and they have all of the police, uh, uh, police evidence that uh, Marcus was working on and everyone gathers around and they're going through all of the evidence again and they are trying to figure out what Libby is up to next. And this is where they conclude that Libby, because she remembers all of her joyful memories from the past, she's trying to recreate a time when she was happy. So she's regressing to her childhood. And they end up figuring out uh, Libby's old house. And they're like, you know what? If Libby wants to recreate her happy memories, she's back at this house in Brooklyn. We need to go there. And yes, it's, uh, it's revealed that Libby is indeed at that old house and she's forcing ballet on Claire. And I'm like, ooh, this is creepy. The child doesn't want to dance. So Burns is there and uh, Sarah, Laszlo, and John are there as well. And Burns like, I can't go in there. Uh, a shootout might uh, harm the child and the rest of the dusters might, might attack us as well. So I'll set up a perimeter and I want you all to go in. And I was like, you know what? That doesn't make any sense. Why would you send Sarah, Laszlo, and John alone without any backup? Again, it made no sense. So Gugu Knox is like, whose house are we in? And Libby is like, it's my house, uh, Gugu. And Gugu doesn't believe her. So yeah, Sarah, John, and Laszlo go in. And again, I'm like, why are these three alone? Why isn't there a police officer with them? Where the heck is uh, Lucius? Like someone should be with them. But yeah, Libby and uh, Gugu hear these three coming in and Libby's trying to get uh, 
Claire to bond with her, but Claire, of course, is creeped out by this woman, even though she's her mother. And you can uh, and uh, Libby is uh, losing her temper, uh, at temper at Claire, and you know that uh, she might end up hurting her. So Gugu comes out uh, from behind and he aims his gun at, at Sarah, Laszlo, and John. But before he can shoot, Lucius comes in and he shoots Gugu, knocks dead, and I'm like, good for you, Lucius. Again, these three should not have been here alone without any backup. John, Sarah, and Laszlo go to Libby, and Libby actually puts a broken bottle at Claire's neck. She is like, you know what, I'm going to kill my own daughter, and then I'm going to kill myself so that we can be somewhere where no one can hurt us. And this is where Sarah comes in, and she starts talking about how Libby is hurting the only thing that she loves, and Laszlo chimes in, and Laszlo is like, Libby, whatever happened to you, it doesn't determine uh, uh, your uh, child's life. Your child has his, her entire life in front of her, and you can't take Claire's life away from her. As a mother, you need to understand that. And you know what? Personally, I feel that Libby should have killed Claire. That's my own personal opinion, because if she had killed Claire, that would have made for a more interesting narrative. But no, Libby decides to let Claire go, and she apologizes for what she did because she was like, when I lost the thing that I loved, I ended up trying to replace it and thinking that I might feel that love again, even if it made me feel better for just a little bit. And that makes Sarah cry. But again, I really think that, they should, uh, that she should have killed Claire. Again, my opinion. So Byrne comes in, and they are able to arrest Libby, and it's the next day. And uh, the newspaper uh, is uh, running the story about how Libby has been apprehended and her daughter is safe and how John Moore played a role in it. And apparently John Moore uh, got a promotion at work and he notices Joanna cleaning out her office and he's like, Joanna, now that I've been promoted, I can create my own team and I would like you to work with me. And Joanna is like, John, I appreciate that, but I got a new job uh, somewhere it's Brooklyn, maybe. I'm not really sure. I can't remember. But I'm going to go work there because that environment is more progressive, which makes, which I mean, it's clear that it means that it's more uh, inclusive and Joanna will feel more comfortable there. So, yeah, bye bye, Joanna. Again, I was expecting a whole lot more from Joanna. Maybe again in season three. Who knows? So uh, Violet comes to meet John, and John is like, Violet, we both need to talk. And Violet is like, you know what, John? I have a feeling that we need to talk with each, uh, with each other as well. And uh, Laszlo uh, is shown uh, to be at uh, Cyrus's place. And Cyrus gives him a book. And, uh, and Laszlo is like, Cyrus, I'm still, try I'm still a bit confused. I'm trying to find my own happiness, but I'm not really sure if uh, I can be myself without uh, disassociating myself from the Laszlo Institute. And Cyrus is like, Laszlo, I found myself when I left that institute and you might end up finding yourself as well. So John goes to meet uh, Sarah, and Sarah is trying to take out bullets from her furniture, and this is where uh, John tells Sarah that Violet is pregnant, and Sarah's like, John, I'm happy and I'm sad, but yeah, I'm happy and sad for you, and uh, you are finally going to get the thing that you want the most, and it's something that I couldn't give you. You're becoming a father. You're, you're becoming a husband, you, you'll, you'll have a wife. And this is also where John shares that he's looking forward to the child because ever since his uh, brother died, uh, he thinks that this child might, be, might have a part of his brother in him. So it's a very emotional uh, conversation and they hug it out. And I have to say, as a viewer of this show, I actually liked how the writers handled their relationship because again, these two are very, very, very different people. These two have very, very different aims in their life, even though they do love each other and they share a bond. They can't be together, and trying to force these two together would have uh, led to one of them changing, and that would have been healthy. But yeah, I liked how they ended up uh, managing their relationship. However, personally, I still think, think that they shouldn't have slept with each other because that was an entire messy situation that was unnecessary in my opinion. But yeah, it happened. So yeah, John is going to get married to Violet. 
Uh, and then we get to see Karen playing chess with Laszlo, and she's like, Laszlo, you are being very bold while you're playing chess because the stakes aren't high. So why don't I say that if, uh, if you lose, I will be free to do with you as I please. And Laszlo is like, you know what, let's do this. And Laszlo ends up losing. And uh, yeah, Karen just wants him to come with her to Vienna. And then these two are walking outside the institute. And Laszlo is like, my institute can still function without me. And meeting you, Karen, has uh, made me want to change for the better. And Karen is like, you know what, Laszlo, I would like you to change, but don't change too much because I like you as you are. And then this is where Laszlo says that we, uh, I'll go to Vienna with you. So yeah, these two are going to Vienna. John is getting married and Sarah has a detective agency. And the episode shows the three friends sitting together, sharing dinner and yeah, I still remember in the season one finale, Marcus and Lucius was there as well, but Marcus is dead. I can't get over it. Why is Marcus dead? But then again, season one also had a lot of deaths, so I shouldn't be too surprised. So these three are talking about friendship and how they're lucky to have each other. And then Violet comes in and John has to go and he's gone. And yeah, he he's getting what he wants uh, in his life. And Sarah is like, Laszlo, when will you be back? And Laszlo is like, maybe I'll stay in Vienna for six months, maybe longer. I'm not really sure. And Sarah is like, you know what? Have fun with Karen. And these two share a drink. And then the scene shifts to Sarah visiting uh, the asylum or the institute where Martha Knapp was uh, sentenced to death by electric chair. And she's looking at the electric chair and she's remembering everything that Libby told her about wanting to find love and and attaching yourself to something even if it makes you happy for a little bit and while sarah is walking out of the institute she decides to go and me and see libby and yeah it's clear that libby is going to die uh, from the electric chair and hmm i'm okay with it it makes sense but then again uh, one of the things that i didn't enjoy is that it seems that the dr marco arc has disappeared uh, maybe if this season had another episode they would have tried to finish that arc off but yeah i wanted to know more about what happened with dr marco because dr marco uh, was the first main character we saw in this season and then he disappeared so what's happening there maybe in season three again i'm not really sure so the episode ends with uh, Sarah introducing a new recruit to their detective agency, and this is Kitty Burns. I'm not really sure if she is uh, related to Captain Burns somehow, maybe her goddaughter, uh, a niece, I'm not sure. And then we have a speech from Sarah about how they are, even if other people don't respect a detective agency being run by women, uh, they are still making a change in this world and in the future people will respect them even if they don't respect them right now and yeah that was it for the episode uh angel of darkness is over i will be doing a written review of this for the geek theory the link to the review will be down in the comment section below as soon as the review goes up i enjoyed this season i also enjoyed how tnt decided to release two episodes per week uh, i enjoyed that even though it went uh, by quite fast it was still a fun episode. It was still a fun season. And let me know what you guys thought of it down in the comment section below. Again, I have read that the author is working on a third and four, uh, on a fourth book. Apparently, there is a third book, but the third book uh, is is set in uh, modern times and it focuses on different characters. However, the fourth book might uh, focus on Sarah and John and Laszlo again. Who knows? Let's see what happens. So yeah, the next show I think I'll be recapping and reviewing is HBO's new show uh, named Lovecraft Country. So if you guys want to stick around for that, subscribe, throw a like and all of that good stuff. And until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later. Bye.